called to order. Done. Public comments. Any members of the public care to share any thoughts about our organization? Oh, not recently. It's quiet. All right, we're just checking off the list here. Um, approval of minutes. We're looking at 12 12 23 is the last time we convened and uh, made decisions. In fact, I think we passed the budget. Um, so if everyone could pull up those draft minutes from 12 12 23 and spend a few and uh, check for accuracy. Um, yeah, if you see any reason to amend, just please note it and share it. I'm going to go quiet and and uh, let's all reminisce a bit. December 12th. Nathan is here. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right. That was seven. Yeah. Great. It's looking real clean again, Chad. I don't know if anyone's found any amendables. Do I need to accept the minutes as uh, presented? Um, I mean, I, I, I don't see any. Uh, need for amendment. I think I don't think you're jumping the gun there, Pat. Nope, I, uh, we, I, we have I, a I, mo I we have a motion. I don't see anything. Yeah, we have a motion on the floor. Pat is uh, moved to accept the minutes of twelve twelve twenty three. Do we have a second or amendments or discussion? A second. Seconded by Palin. Thank you. Um, all those in favor of approving the very clean twelve twelve twenty three minutes, please by indicate by saying aye. 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 And opposed? Thanks yet again, Chad. That's really uh, well dialed in. Nice level of detail. Um, that'll bring us to item four, financial reports. Um, well, Jen, I guess you'll do the... Hey, Pat, I think you're on. Yeah, I am. I see you all, but I don't think you can see me, but I'm here. Okay. So I'm going to... Hang up the phone. Yeah, your, your audio is a bit better that way. That's well worth switching over. Yeah, right. You can't see how bad I look. <laughs> hey, you got this. You, I need a haircut. Well, that's the same thing. It's true about uh, your radio show. You know, we don't get to see you, but boy, you sound oh, yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. What do they say? A face for radio? Isn't that a, an old joke? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's the benefit of radio. You can look like crap and nobody knows it. Um, Jen, I think you've got the, the 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 heavy lift on the financial reports. I guess just to lead, do you know if um CJ did because reading the minutes from 1212, if, if if the accounts did actually um shift? Oh. You know, I don't know offhand. Um if they did, I'm not quite sure what to look for on the Ed Jones statements to see if they have shifted or not. And I haven't yeah. heard anything from CJ about the status on that. My my understanding was that um, CJ was kind of psyched to figure out how to how to move move some money around and do a little bit better with our um, in consultation with Mark. Um, 
So you're saying we don't know if that's happened. I don't know. Um, okay. I haven't. I can look closer at the Ed Jones and maybe send out a report, but I haven't. I don't know exactly what to look for. Uh, what it. But would yeah, it, you would be you would be trying to read tea leaves as opposed to getting a word <laughs> for a treasure. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, no need to do that. Um, so I, I, if you could just do your piece of the financial report. Sure. Um, so I've done, there's two different budget reports. I've, I've, the first one is the 2024 year to date, as well as the, for the year. So it's, we started the new year. I think, um, the one thing to note is that the government appropriations check that we received in 2023, I had the accountant shift over because we wanted it to show up in the 2024 budget. So it is there and we've received it. So that would be the one piece. Um, and I think, you know, we've been from the year to date, we're doing pretty well. We've been really, and it's kind of covered in the co-directors report as well is that we're looking because we were over on the compensation. So that would be after the 2024 budget, there is the 2023, which like the end of the year. So all, and we did get the Comcast check. So all our revenues are in there. And so we were low on revenues as expected for 2023. Um, the, but I think that also we were over on compensation. So that's where we decided to be a little bit um, to look closer per pay period to make sure that we are the budget that we've got for the camera operators are matching up and we're not going too much over. Although for legislative season, I think historically we always have extra hours that we do because we try to cover the state house. And because the budget is pretty much the same amount every month, we do expect to kind of be over on the compensation budget for the you know next three months or so. But then with legislative season being over, we generally will be under. So we'll kind of even out by the end of the year. So, but we are keeping track a little bit better about um, how many camera operators are going out and what we can actually cover based on capacity and staffing and um, trying to do that. And then I think the we were a little bit under on our capital expenses for the year. We try to do we try to spend as much as we can to like redo the we got some new cameras. And so I think we were able to kind of move out some of the older equipment and not have them so front line, I guess, would be the way to think of it. And then we are hoping to mileage at the end of the year, we always get all the mileage checks coming through. And so we are over on that mileage amount. And so also hopefully we have one camera operator who lives down over in that Randolph Bethel-ish area. So hopefully we'll be able to reduce some of that mileage um, by having him keep a kit with him. So he doesn't actually have to come up here and go back down and then come back up here. So he might be able to do a little bit more through his home base of home. And then we've got the project, which is the Youth Documentary Lab and the Green Mountain Film Festival um, for this year, as well as the end of the year for 2023. So, so those are, I, there's, um, I've got two docs in the folder, budget versus actuals, 24 projects and 23 projects. Yes. So I did. So, those are solely documentary lab and um, film festival. Yes. So yes. we try to keep them. And so the first two R's, the Orca Media ones, don't include those line items so that we could try to keep on top of whether we're doing well with our own budget. And so the end, the totals look a little bit closer to what we have expect and I think with the Youth Documentary Lab and the Green Mountain Film Festival because they have I think the Green Mountain Film Festival now you're starting to see a lot more of the expenses coming through and so we just thought it'd be cleaner to try to keep them separate. Is, is there a way to predict revenue from that like we're ch charging how much a ticket we expect whatever average of 48 people to show up uh, no one blind on that or how do you how do you Gage, we, we've been uh, 
I've been looking through all the past uh, budgets and um, documents that we inherited, but a lot was missing. And so a lot of it's, uh, yeah, trial and error and seeing what happens this year. So there's a whole bunch of uh, excitement that we'll touch on in the co-directors report. So yeah, we're hoping sure. to, we're hoping to do our, do as well. Yeah, just clean, just cleanly on the money side. Looking forward to the co-directors part. Um, do you know just historically? Is it is it generally been a, a break even proposition, a make a little, um, lose a little proposition, or it's been all over the place. Uh, oh, okay. Probably, yeah, it's it's they tried a number of things. They've been in yeah, they've been in the black, they've been in the red. They've uh, yeah, they've broke even a number of years. We also there were several years like missing documents. I mean, there's so I I would look at look at it less based on the historical context than just what's happening now. I think this is we're gonna learn a lot from this year. So yeah, year one, so sure. And they yeah. Yeah. So unfortunately, I don't think that yeah, I don't think we can provide a lot of information on that on the financial side. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But we're we're fairly confident we didn't buy a white elephant, so to speak. Right. Yeah, I think that's yet to be determined. Yeah, but uh, no, it's self-sustaining, luckily, and um, it's it's got a lot of momentum and a lot of energy, so that's good. Yay! All right. Um, I guess questions on the on, on the budget pieces, and then I I would think um, Pat's letter out would probably fall into this section. We might want to spotlight that as well. Oh, okay. I think I would think financials. Discussion. I was thinking the audit letter might be part of old business because we had the planning for audit. Sounds as part great. Of that. You've already thought of it. Great. So then we're really talking about budget questions for Jim. Or we have a very easy to please turnout tonight, and or could entertain a motion to accept. So Jim. Um... Did have, have we? I'm trying to read the budget. Did we get money ahead of time for the Green Mountain Film Festival? Mm -hmm. I think there was 20,000, 15,000 that started off when we first, when they asked us to have them. And then I think that was about it. Was yeah, 15. we inherited about $15,000 with the project. So they had it in the GMFF account? Yep. And yeah, then they transferred it to us. Yeah, that was their war chest, and they they passed it over to us. Yeah. But how do they pay for the films themselves? Uh, through mostly through uh, sponsorships up front. So, and we'll touch on that in the code director okay, report. Sorry, but I'll no, wait. I mean that's that's a financial question. So that's a good question. Yeah, it, films are very expensive, especially showing new films. Um, and so the idea is that you solicit sponsors. You get money. Well, I mean, this is a pretty unique situation is that $15,000 is a great amount of money to start with. Yeah. So that's how we were able to afford a lot of the team that we put together uh, with, with uh, Paibon, Teresa, and Sam, the independent contractors. Mm -hmm. So that helped really uh, get the ball rolling. Yeah. And I don't see a line for advertising the plant films and the events so that's all i think jim was saying that that's all so all rolled in oh it's right is that what you we've separated okay. that yeah that if you want to see what is that included here so it's in the budget that says uh youth documentary lab and green mountain gmff yeah. so on there there is um for 2024 i think they broke it out a little bit more so there's there was some at marketing and advertising and um, see if it shows up. It may not, I may not have pulled it. I know that we added some new accounts so that they started to differentiate. I think when they first put in the budget, it was bigger chunks and, they, and then they started to differentiate it. And I think I just, I will make a note. Yeah, and I'll say too that like, Ben has been super uh, supportive as like the bookkeeper for all of this and mm -hmm. has like, uh, so we kind of like are using the budget that they, you know, using the line items that we inherited, but I think Jen and Paivon have worked together to like break it apart even more to make it a little bit more 
clear and transparent. And going forward, I think that there's going to be um, a lot has happened in the last couple of weeks too. So even the one you see in the next one, right? Because this is January, right? So we won't see well, my a lot of the marketing, like the the expenditures around marketing that have published. Like, sorry, sorry. Does that make sense? A lot of a lot of the recent like marketing and advertising. Uh, money has just been spent. And we pay for the marketing. No, everything is coming out of the Green Mountain Film Festival's uh, okay. expense, or, uh, I mean, income. My own hunch is that because there was a lapse in it happening, that the uh, old fans need to be reminded that it's going to be and and that's yeah. when it's going to be and get it on their calendars yeah and, and, and want to see some of the movies yeah that's definitely what's okay. what we've been doing yeah so we right. inherited a a list of 450 emails you know okay. and, and addresses and things like that and so luckily there's yeah and we've been getting the word out and the banners are hung downtown so i, I mean we started promoting it was over a year ago too. right i think Coming yeah we wrote a press release over a year ago yeah. now i mean yeah, so and remind me of the actual date. March 14th to the 17th. Packed yeah. schedule. Yeah. Opening night is March 14th. Okay. Well, it'll be St. Patty's Day festivals too. <laughs> yeah, there's gonna be Irish it'll music be, too at Rebel Rouser. At least the uh includes weights until April. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but does that answer your question about marketing and advertising? Yeah, I yeah, I think you'll see more of that too on the next one. Uh, more questions, budgets, projects, or otherwise, or a motion to accept financials. I'll move to accept the financials. And that was Pat moving to Pat. accept the financial. Thank you. Yep. Um, do we have a second or further questions for Jen and Chris? I'll second it. And I heard a second from Dave. Thank you. All those in favor of accepting the financial reports, please indicate by saying aye. 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 And opposed. And it's quiet, so that's unanimous. Uh, we're moving on to the co-director's report. I think Chris takes you, the lead uh, on just that. Just one second. Sorry. Go, go ahead, Chad. Who made the motion? Who made the motion to at to Dave second yeah. <clears throat> Thanks. Yeah, slow us down anytime. Sorry. And uh, Chris is up on the co-directors. I don't know. Sure. If you so, um, I think we get, if everyone's got it within their agenda here, and um, uh, as we've been doing, what we'll do is just kind of like pull out some of the highlights, the exciting highlights. And Zach, I mean Zach, you can speak to production maybe since mm -hmm. that's been in your wheelhouse. There's been a lot of production happening. I don't even, yeah. This isn't even quite all of it. You want to say what's the uh, what's your favorite thing? What's my favorite thing? Um, live streaming. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so we've been after COVID, we've been doing a lot of live streaming and zooming stuff. Um, a lot of these are special events. We've done more with the schools and concerts. Right. Right. Um, and so they're asking us to do. All of the stuff. Um, the Montpelier flood recovery form was kind of big because they had multiple breakout rooms to multiple people. Yeah, I would say that that was definitely the biggest, biggest operation coming out of like how we had done the previous ones. This was uh, the kind of the regrouping of the Montpelier flood uh, recovery commission or the resilience commission, I think they call it. And, Anyway, yeah, so that was that was a big job. Uh, and they were all taking over the high school. So we, yeah, that was a great production. Um, and I can move into the uh so yeah, you can see here a lot of this has been the work around um under community partnerships and outreach. A lot of it has been the work. Chris, Chris, before you go too deep, I just I got a quick question about the VCFA oh, yeah? uh, neighborhood meeting. Did they share any uh announcements or plans i think i started to watch it and they oh yeah they, 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 te they teased something that was coming up at the end but i didn't get to it 
That was kind of focused on, uh, it seems to be their uh, tactic of being somewhat transparent with like uh, purchase agreements that are in the works. So uh, actually our, who, who we're working with in a number of other capacities, Kiana, the theater director at Montpelier High School is uh, has formed a new nonprofit called the Montpelier Performing Arts Hub. And they're um, under contract to buy the Gary Library. So that's what that particular meeting was about. They made a few okay. announcements in the beginning about the partnership, the partnership thing, because that was in the news. And to clarify that they're more or less still VCFA and they're just looking for somebody to kind of like acquire their brand. Um, mm -hmm. But they said that nothing is official and there'll be a lot more to come on that. But the bulk of the meeting was about the fundraising efforts to buy Gary Library. Got you. And it, could that performing arts outfit potentially be a partner with Orca and some? Yeah, I've had several meetings already, at least two or three with Kiana, um, talking about that and talking about the Green Mountain Film Festival stuff. Um, and uh, she was really excited to kind of like just let me know that uh, that they were working on the performing arts hub because they do want a kind of like a computer lab and education center to kind of happen in the basement where maybe, yeah, hmm. there could be some, I don't know, uh, designing of things and computer things that are involved with performing arts. Yeah, but they're really excited. She said that a lot of it's going to be focused on education, youth education. And then they're going to have a black box theater is the goal and a cafe. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's the proposal. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's that sale is 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 in the works or yeah, that's not... a, I think that's a, a kind of a, a unique one in the in the the agreement is the public uh the knowledge that was shared was that they have six months to raise six hundred thousand dollars. Okay, okay. So contingent. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Um, and they, did they so, also use that to announce a new president or something? Or so yeah, it was kind of like a, they had already. Yeah, he had made a couple of statements before, but this was him like, "Hi, everyone, I'm on campus." His I first think. sort of public. It's me. Gotcha. Yeah, sorry, he is interim. Yeah, interim. he's interim. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, they're still I, looking. They're still looking, and I did meet with him prior to the start of the meeting to let him know about Orca Media and that, you know, we're still here in a matter, no matter what happens to BCFA. Got it. Okay. So that was a pretty busy meeting. Thanks for the update there. And then you can, I'm sorry, I detoured you. Oh, sure. Sure. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to kind of pull out, I'm not going to read everything here, but there's a lot, uh, like I said, a lot of momentum with the Green Mountain Film Festival, the kind of core, uh, Organizing team has, um, I've been meeting with them and, and supporting them as much as I can, and they're just doing a, a bang up job. Yeah, they just, um, you can see here that Sarducci's uh, was announced um, as the presenting sponsor. So that was $20,000 that was given to the Green Mountain Film Festival just recently. So that um, covers like a, almost uh, all of the expense for films. So that's the kind of top tier sponsorship. Um, Sarducci's was named and um, has become supportive, so it, it's just great. Yeah, super great. Uh, and then you can see that the partnerships that we've been kind of working on across the board um, with uh, the uh, kind of around the opening night, the Montpelier Chamber Orchestra is also kind of coming back after uh, a long hiatus with COVID. Um, so the opening night um, is kind of a celebration of their return, too. It's going to be a free um film like live film and, and music event at the city hall arts center um some other partnerships include for the first time uh the green mountain film festival will be taking place at both the savoy theater and the capitol theater um rabble rouser is going to be like the kind of festival hub there's going to be some activities chad and and the vermont production collective are organizing a, a lot of free events kind of around the festival so that obviously the films will be ticketed because of the cost and um, and anyway, so what else? Oh yeah, so Montpelier High School, we're gonna be doing a, a free uh, youth media panel um, with a, a handful of groups, um, including 
Carlos and some of his students will be joining the panel. Um, Carlos is also helping uh, lead the three day film slam kind of, um, which is uh, gonna be the weekend this weekend prior to the festival. Super exciting and that's a free event. Anybody can make a film based on a prompt three days and then it can be screened at the Green Mountain Film Festival. You can see here, these are the free events happening. Um, the fourth graders are coming to see a film for free, which is super cool. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, we have UVM interns. We have CBL students working with us from Montpelier High School. We have um, a Norwich University student doing a project. Um, yeah, and then some youth volunteers that kind of uh, coming out of the Vermont Youth Documentary Lab. My my trusted uh, brothers, uh, Gardner and Campbell, down the road here who have volunteered to do everything. They're very kind. They've been at the opening, uh, sorry, at the open houses here. Um, anyway, so that's that's the latest. Any questions on that? Do we uh, do we do recording at the uh, Wednesday night stuff at the State House? Uh, yeah, we haven't. Yeah, so when they've asked us, I think we've been having like um, there are certain because they're different groups. Like we were trying to coordinate and see if they wanted us, we're available. But then I think so. We did one event where they asked us to cover with Kekla Magoon when she did her talk. But I think um, the Bread and Puppets. We had a community producer who was covering that for them. So, so, that so I'm looking at the schedule today at 11:30 tonight on 10:75. It says bread and puppets. So that's a community producer has a regular bread and puppets. Okay, that's not the series. one that happened. But he did cover the farmers market or the farmers night bread and puppets. So he will, okay. as part of his. Okay, so I go home and turn on ten seventy five after this meeting and yeah. see what I didn't get to at the state house. So I think it's not mm -hmm. quite on there. I think he just finished it, so we just need to bring it over and okay. put it on. So. It may be not this week, but the next showing. So the next time you see Bread and Puppets on here after tonight, it probably will be the Farmer's Market one, or the Farmer's Night, sorry. The other thing I wanted to thank you for was having a chance to see, and I didn't see it yet, the uh, stories for a summer nights at the old meeting house. The summer night? The winter night? Winter, winter. night. Okay, yes, we did winter. have that. Yeah, yeah. That was good for yeah. the community to have that happen. Mm -hmm. Some of us couldn't get there. Yeah, Thank you. yeah, we've been doing a lot. Um, and I'll also add that Orca Media um, will be live streaming a number of events and recording a few, um, live streaming the opening night. So something to look forward to if you can't make it. Yeah, that's um, what I was going to ask. Is Orca going to capture like the talks and special events? Sounds like that's all built yeah, in. Yeah, some of them. Um, yeah, uh, the the kind of the free events, um, I think we can capture all of them. Some of them have a little bit of nuance to them based on like um, recording Q and A's and talking about films and all of the kind of like rollout with distributors and things like that um, is my understanding. Um, like there's a little bit more sensitivity to those, the ticketed events, but uh, we, can, we can definitely, and we're planning to support um, in a number of ways, yeah. Um anyway, so uh and it, so which things which things are we we will be streaming? Well, as of right now, we're just planning to stream the Farming While Black panel and the opening night. Yeah. But um there's no reason it's we can't the concert, the BSO and the it's not it's uh M Montpelier Chamber Orchestra, oh. not BS, yeah, mm -hmm. the MCO. Um yeah, the opening night will just be um two musical performances, uh, the Evan and Andreas act, uh, mm -hmm. and then Montpelier Chamber Orchestra, yeah. and then some opening remarks. So that'd be nice. And then uh, the Farming While Black panel is a post uh, film panel of, of BIPOC farmers around Vermont and that worker will be there. Um, the other ones we could, we could very well just come and capture like the youth media panel at Montpelier High School, we could send a camera operator, we could send a camera operator to the uh, Vermont Production Collective panel, and like the, the talk at the library, those, those ones I think could just be covered. And then, yeah. Yeah, I think if this, you know, no copyright sensitivity, they, 
they've become uh you know great marketing you can you know start yeah next year start showing them in january and february yeah you know, exactly people's now, whistle for the, the upcoming know, year yeah. you know go ahead yeah oh sorry i just i I don't know. It sounded like someone may have was talking while I was. So I was just saying, go ahead and say what you were saying. Oh, I just said, yeah, we can definitely do that. And we'll let you all know which ones we're covering for sure. If you can't, can't make it and you want to tune in. Thanks. Um, and then, yeah, that's, I was going to just mention a couple of other exciting things where I'm working up uh, with the main street middle school right now to develop a, series of documentary videos for this uh, big STEM and robotics fair um, in May. Um, and then the basement, we've invited the basement teen center who is still without a home post flood. Uh, they've been coming in here Tuesdays and Thursdays and um, on their rotating locations. So they're at different places throughout Montpelier letting it's a drop in teen space, kind of like unprogrammed uh, teen center that used to be at the city hall for a long time uh, and they lost their space due to the flood and so we've been hosting them which has been great um yeah so let's see strategic plan so uh we made a note here that january was very busy. We had every intention to uh, organize with our circles and check in, but uh, with the start of the legislative session, we didn't get to it. So uh, we are reviewing the process. We've decided we're going to kind of like re-review some of the work from Nathan and then reach back out to you guys to uh, talk about the next steps to kind of work our way through the rest of the strategic plan together. So, And we do have it on the agenda, so we'll have a maybe a little bit more robust conversation about what it is, the process we were thinking of for the next, for the strategic plan and the ongoing part of that. Um, so we will touch upon it as part of the agenda. Yeah. Um, yes, I noticed that CVTV 92 is still running the midnight to dawn uh, arts and culture program that used to be on our channels. We don't do it anymore. That's just a placeholder. I actually put that in there myself when I was working for Tony. So um, I think he just runs the same ad over and over, yeah. So we don't carry it anymore. It, I mean- The one that's paid for by the billion. That one was that one was just a generic, I called it arts and culture. That's not connected to anything specific. Doing this for a long time. It was the classic art. It was the classic, the classic arts is different. Yes, and we do show the classic classic art showcase on the education channel in the late evenings. So after I think our programming theoretically ends at midnight from so midnight till I think noon is classic art showcase. So we do still play it. Okay, it's, but it's not on our ten seventy five. 1065 or the education the, channel. The education channel. I think that's 1085. Okay, good. I just want to know because I, yeah. I, we do play it. I'm a night owl. <laughs> I used to love it. Yeah, yeah it is kind of so, I mean, you know, you could see amazing things. Yeah. Um, from all over the world. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so I'm just going to move on to the next, the last couple sections here. Um, we have a new camera operator, uh, Meng Hong. It's really great. Uh, she's also working. Mm -hmm. Um, at a new arts center in uh, Montpelier called the Crumb Factory, which is an, uh, a nice new collective arts space. And there is going to be a few events during the Green Mountain Film Festival that she's organizing independently. Um, so some some overlap there. Good. That's good to hear. I think I connected her with you and Devon yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. a while ago. Yeah, because she did the film the music for Lucas's film, or was maybe? Maybe. Yeah, yeah. She reached out that she had moved here, I believe, and was looking to. Oh, be right. Yeah, yeah. So, a while back. Yeah. yeah. So we've been talking ever since. Yeah. Um, no one ever remembers the one who the one who does the connect. Oh, we remember you, Chad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, <laughs> right here. Well, well, take a note. <laughs> yeah. Chad <laughs> reminds. He was Chad the, the Chad connected. <laughs> Um, okay, so and then uh, we'll have Jen again touch on finance, finances. So I think just besides the finance, so the Comcast check, I kind of hit upon real quick, but the Comcast check came in in February. And once again, it was lower. 
So I've made, um, I think that in the financial reports, the revenue that we're expecting is still going to be lower than the budget because it's still, the check amount was still lower than the lowest one that we had received. So that decrease is continuing. I think um, if you looked at the 2023 budget, we were under budget against revenues about 18,000. And the only reason like the end of the year number looked the overall revenues is that because of the capital gains was much higher than what we budgeted, but it is definitely, I think, um, it kind of falls into play with what's happening over with the advocacy group and trying to get more permanent funding as well as I think we do still have um, a request into the budget for this year, 2025, for I think it's a million, like it was last time. Yes. So hopefully if that goes through, which then I would imagine like another 45,000 portion should go through. So I think um, it is, I think for a while before it was kind of stagnant, but we definitely now it keeps going down. So it's definitely something. And I think we started to talk about, you know, we were starting to talk about for higher services and what that might look like to try to look at not only the permanent funding, but some, you know, we generally have not asked for money for productions. And we've just kind of been like, if they asked us to come, we came. But I think maybe we might this year start to push it out. I think what we were trying to do was just kind of with our brand show that, you know, increase our production level so that it started to, like they could know what kind of events or coverage they could expect from us and also more of the live streaming. So now hopefully we can start to say, you know, we're doing this. Maybe if you want to put in some money, that would be great. And um, I think, and maybe some of the, the bigger ones, I think sometimes we do work for Norwich University and that may be that we'll start that conversation again of, you know, can you, with the live streaming fees, could you maybe put in what you can or Especially if they're outside of our service area, like Norwich, yeah. And the day long events, and yeah. I, yeah. it's like three, four hours of pre production. So, like and I think um, one of the things, like for this, for 2023, with the budget, our production that revenue was down because we, I think the only group that we do charge for our services is the city of Montpelier, and they did remote only for a while. And then even I think when we came back, we didn't invoice them because they were already super low on funds. And we felt that it seemed kind of like we wanted to do our part to try to not stress out the city. And it was such a small amount because there was only a few meetings that we covered after the flood. But that would be the other bit of, um, I know that the city of Montpelier has like a budget crunch. And so it may be that we start to look at the other groups and see if, you know, if they're a little bit more robust that they might be willing to put in some. And I think especially for those that were doing facilitating their hybrid meetings rather than, so that would be an area that we might be able to ask for since um, it's a little bit more complex that we're providing. So, so I, last, go ahead. Oh no, that was it. I was just gonna end it. <laughs> okay, so last week, um, Board members were called to action to check in with the sergeant at arms and um, particularly ask two legislators. Um, so could someone provide like the precipitating context to that? Like what was going on that, um, uh, sure, yeah. just how it all shook out. Cause we just kind of got a sliver of what looked like a much larger story. There were a couple of wavering legislators. So if someone could tell that story from the beginning to where we are since. Um, yeah, so that's funny that you say that because uh, we had a van board meeting today and uh, all agreed that this legislative session has been incredibly confusing. Um, and even where our uh, community media public benefit fund sits now is like very curious so it's like uh the one of the things that is that came out of this afternoon was that we're gonna draft up uh, like a one page what has happened so far uh this session because it has like moved around and was absorbed into a house bill that we were all that we were commenting on and then it was taken out um calling in on um so that 
particular like call to action came from LG and uh, Action Circles, our lobbyists. And it, it's my understanding of it was that it was like rather last minute because they were gonna uh, they were gonna discuss the 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 bill in the committee and those two folks apparently at the last ways and means committee meeting expressed some doubts um mostly around the fact that they live in orange county and orange county is has historically not been served by any peg tv organization well, uh randolph is in orange county say it again randolph is in orange county right i guess yeah sorry well, we yeah, serve orange, orange county. county work and media serves orange county Right. I mean, that's, was, that would have been helpful to know what towns those two pe people were from, because I picked one of them as a Randolphian. I don't know if he would have listened. One of them would have listened to me more than the other. But right, yeah, yeah, context was really lacking there. And um, well, I, it I sounds like it's just been a confusing session all around. I agree. I mean, that's that's definitely I've, I've expressed that as well. Uh, You're both Orange United. County. Are they on the Connecticut Riverside? of orange county so, yeah so we i think did look carl at... demro is in that berkshire so that berkshire area okay. that isn't in any cable country. yeah 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 and that so that... that's where he was saying like i don't get served although we did do when they were doing their candidate forum we did come out to berkshire and cover their candidate yeah, forum I, know. I and he was oh, on it but for us <laughs> so um, but it was that he was speaking from like his area wasn't in a a cable area, and so he wasn't covered, and he probably like he wouldn't see if any of those cable channels. And I think Jim Maslin was in Randolph, and I think CJ knew him, and and so and I don't know that he was so much on the fence like Demro. Like if you watch the video, he definitely was right, like, right. I don't get served or my area doesn't get served, which is true, but we do try to, if they want us or need us, we try to accommodate them, even though they're not in a service area. So- I, I, They're I, probably I, geographically I, closer to JAM, but- um, Yeah, I think they are. Well, and I was gonna say that we we watched back, or I don't know if we, we, uh, everyone watched it, but like when I watched it back, uh, Jim, Maslin. Uh, Jim Maslin expressed support and then I wrote you know to the the lobbyist and they were like well we should call them anyway so I don't know it was it was very confusing even that like 24 hour you have the call to action so I think that they were saying even if the folks are expressing support they've expressed doubt in the past like let's just call and you rally around these people and that's what you do so now I'm is, sorry. is yeah. Is calling the sergeant of arms to leave a message for someone, is that standard operating procedure on sort of actually, a last minute that, thing? That is actually, and you know, funny funny enough is that I, I just saw a full page ad for the big like tobacco uh, issue with the, st the stores, the flavor tobacco, and they were asking to call that same number and just say that you support this issue and what town oh. you're calling from. So I guess that is standard procedure, especially at that Just put it in hour. the right bin, <laughs> put a part of the, their job. Yeah, they yeah, have no, I'm sorry, they have the legislative pages deliver the the little pink slip to of you about your phone call to the law to the legislature. Uh, so they do it. get it directly. Thanks, Pat. And that's what that's what we were speculating is that this just becomes that last minute page is running a, a, <laughs> a card that says someone just called from Randolph, someone just called from you know Montpelier saying support the poll attachment. And that's why they said don't name a bill, just say that what you're supporting so i think that that's a good segue to the last section is that uh like i said van is hopefully going to draft something up especially for folks that are kind of on the peripheral here that want to support and want to know what we're talking about uh right when we are talking about what's happening in the session that has to do with us so we're going to have a kind of like you know where it's going or how it started and how it's going kind of thing you know so uh Hopefully that helps. I think that would that's that would be helpful. Um, and I'll say this too, uh, is that there's even talk of like leaving the pull attachment fees altogether and moving into a streaming fee and jumping onto that. So it's a lot is happening and very quickly. And I think uh, it's confusing for those even involved with the the advocacy work. 
And I don't know if that helps at all or adds more. Do we have a sense of timeline going forward, like a crossover or where, what is, when will we know if we're in the, in the pod or not? That's a great question because I mean, it sounds like as far as I've been following it, this is a pretty typical is that, you know, if you, if they, you know, if some, if some committee decides that they're going to take your issue or your, especially if it has to do with a, a new tax and they're going to marry it to something else, you know, and then they're going to take it out again. And now you're freelance, you know, it, like, it seems like that is kind of common and you have less control of it other than, you know, that first, uh, introduction of the bill, right? And then the advocacy that happens after that. Chris, do you have a lobbyist uh, following this? Does We do, do have yeah. A lobbyist? We're, we've been that? working with action circles. With who? Action circles. Oh, right, okay. Because it's Amy their job to follow Schumer. that. Sorry? I said it's Is their it? job to follow that. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So could, we'll get, we'll expect sort of a one pager. Here's what happened and here's where we're going. Yes. It's kind of like a, I think that's something that the, the action circles is providing. Um, when I think I, I said van, but I think action circles is that's part of their service is like, cause we're at the midterms essentially of the, the session. Right. Yeah. yeah. And so it's like, yeah. this is your midterm report card where you're at. Well, it's important to know where this is because Crossover is a week after town meeting week. Or it's called crossover, and if yeah. you don't make it over there, if it doesn't cross over, if it's in the House and go to the Senate, you're kind of screwed. So the, your lobbyist should tell you where it is um, before the end of this week. So you could we could work on it during the town meeting week. Yep, that's super helpful, Pat. Crossovers generally a week after town meeting. Right. And if Thank you don't you. make it over there, then they do the notwithstanding and it's real hard to get it accepted over in the Senate. Yep. Yeah, we need you, Pat. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, I'll keep you posted. And as soon as something like that is available, I'll share with you all. Okay. Appreciate it. And now you could potentially just pivot to streaming like in this session, I wouldn't require some big study or something. I know Maine is 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 choosing the streaming route. I learned that at the um, the right. November conference. Yeah, I, I, apparently so. Well, I think so, Pat. And maybe you could provide because we were getting a little confused. We have a bill in the Senate that I think that the Fed, Senate Finance was going through, and that's where the streaming and from the streaming tax kind of was living. And so then our House bill was we had the community public media public fund that we, I think last year we started talking about and it had a bill number. And then that was the bill that got sucked up into this other bill and became like the tail end of it. And that's, I think where they were starting to talk about taking it out. And so that's where that call of action, I think I think that they wanted to keep it in with that bill, but it, it did get cut out. And so now it's back to being just that community media fund in the house. And I think that's in ways and means and going through, but it was the streaming tax was presented in the Senate finance when they were looking at the community media bill in that committee. So my understanding from some of the notes that Christopher shared was that the Senate finance, they don't, they weren't planning on moving it forward, but they start, it was kind of prepping them to get talking. So when the bill made it over to there that they were familiar and that's I think where that streaming tax started to get discussed. And that's why it seemed like it was, it, like the poll attachment seems to be living within the House side and then the Senate side started to talk about the streaming and how those two bills interact or don't interact, I'm not quite sure. Right, yeah. Well, if they, but, if they merge it, it's because the first bill, the bill they're merging into, they know is gonna go somewhere. So they're trying to put it on a bill that no people want. And um, maybe if it was a standalone, they're not sure if it will pass or not. But Ann Cummings, who is Senator in Montpelier is the chair of finance, so that's a good thing. Yeah, and I will say that, you know, with the exception of the two folks that we 
called or left a message for, we've had great support, you know? So yeah, it's just, an, I think it's just. They're fr logistic. having a hard time figuring out which is the best way to fund. They want to, it seems like based on what I was seeing on the committee, they want to fund PEG. They just can't agree on how to come up with that funding. So whether it's a full touch it, attachment or the streaming, there seems like groups that are against either one. And so I think that's where it's like, we get a lot of support, but it's just like, there's all this difference of opinion about the best way to do it. Absolutely. Yeah. So potentially a streaming tax could cross over from Senate to House. Uh, yeah. What, and potentially a, the poll attachment could cross over from House to Senate. There, a lot of times there are almost duplicate bills that they introduce both in the House and the Senate. And somehow by the end of the session, they've worked it out. Got it. That is what happened here. We do, we have a, we yeah. had a duplicate bill in both. Yeah. Yeah, they have a companion bill. They just want to make sure it gets through somehow. Got it. So is that is that sort of part of action circle strategy to like make sure you've got all you're circling the wagons? Kind of, or it's, is that just oh, could be if sure. I don't know how the who sausage is made? I don't, I don't know if that's actually. Do you strategy. know who introduced the bills, Chris? Um, who are the sponsors? The key sponsors. Uh, Pat Abram. Yeah. And um, he's on the House side, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. And then on the Senate side, um, Baruch. Oh, perfect. Yeah, I mean, and and everyone has been. I mean, there's ten co-sponsors too, yeah. on each one. These these people will not want to see Peg not funded because they know how important it is for them and their votes and getting out in the public. So, I can't imagine they would let it go. Yeah, and I will say this has been like full time. Lauren Glenn Davidia in, in Burlington. She's right. Kind of retired as executive director of CCTV and is yep. just working on this. So, I mean, this is yeah, five I heard, years. I heard her in. testifying the other day. She did a great job. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It'll be all right. I think, I think that does it for our co director's report. Okay. Um, uh, further questions or areas to highlight or motion to accept? Uh, Pat, uh, Pat McDonald, motion to accept. Thank you, Pat. Is there no, a second? second? I heard chat on the second. Please. And uh, all those in favor of accepting the co-director's report of um, this evening, please indicate by saying aye. 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 And opposed. <laughs> Thank you. Unanimous. Um. We're looking at old business, planning for audit. Yep, already tagged there. And then just the, the, the question of Mark visiting Edward Jones, there's two things hanging out there. Um, so you want me to just go through what I did? I appreciate it. Yeah, that makes sense okay. if you want to pick up the audit piece. Okay, if, if you lose, I keep hearing this flashing thing going low, low something, low vibes or who the hell know what. But anyway, I'll talk fast. So I, I had offered last meeting to send out, I, I really think as an organization, you should not do single source if, um, if you don't have to. So we did a modified single source, a limited source, which is I found four CPA firms that would likely do audit. Yeah. Anyone is there? I think we might have. It looks like she went to mute. Well, maybe something died on her end. Uh, that was rude. I'm back. back. Hey, hey. I'm back. I'm yeah. back. I'm back. So um, it's my, something's wrong with my machine. Anyway, um, CJ and I had trouble getting back and forth. So I bravely sent out a letter and um, uh, with, a, with a timeline. And, and Jin helped me a lot. Thank you very much. Um, and, but then I didn't, we haven't heard anything that I know of. And I talked to a, a friend of mine who knows this industry and works in it. 
and said that because we are small, chances are right now, given that most big companies are dealing with the end of the year, you know, the 1231 calendar end of year, plus any uh, problems they've had with flooding and accounting for the money and blah, 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 that we may not hear at all. So I said in my letter that I would recommend that we go back to the single source because we've given it a college try and we've got the letter that I put together that we can use next time as a, as a um, model. And um, I, don't, I wasn't in on the conversation about how quickly we wanted to get this audit done. Um, but if CJ knows somebody, or I can even call Fred, we could just do a one, one uh, sole source because we have tried and I feel comfortable about that. And the person I talked to said that she was comfortable with that approach as well. So that's it. We tried. I, I don't, I don't, I don't think this is, I mean, given the, Given the timeline of all this, I don't think we're in a rush. Oh, okay. Because I would like to do it right. Yeah, um, yeah, I hear you. But I think it's just bad timing because uh, the individual said everybody is up, you know, alligators uh, up to their knees or whatever the expression right. is. So I don't, I don't know if the auditing world has a sort of quiet season. Oh, I have so no we idea. We just wait till May or something like that, or if. Well, um, if we can wait, I will ask her. What's the good time, best time she recommends to send it out? Although CJ would probably know too, but then let's just do the letter and send it, resend it, and uh, put a, a, you know, put a when we want a response back. And and uh, if we're in no rush, I wasn't sure. I uh, mean, is there any sense from anyone that this is pressing? So that it's quiet. Okay, so. I will I will research when and then recommend to the board when we should send it out again. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I get I get how January February could be super busy for. Well, especially because of the flood and all the money coming in. Some kind of amortization from, stuff has to get figured as, out with lost property right, and all that. Yeah. From FEMA and he, she said they probably just went oh no and just put it aside. So um, I'll find out when might be a better time. Yeah, and our budget is 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 would be considered small potatoes in the yeah. auditing but, world, but, even in Vermont. But I think we've got a few bucks in savings. And I think that's what uh, what sort of triggered my, my thoughts about this. Mm -hmm. it, it's not chump change. We have, we have a few bucks and um, I think we should just make sure we're all in good stead, which I am very confident we are, but uh, it's good to have an official yeah. stamp. Yes. And the, and the do it right, as opposed to, you know, yeah. push it through. Okay. Agree. Thank you. If with everybody's approval, I'll ask uh, what what uh, is a good time to send it out, and we'll just the letter's done. It's accurate, and we'll just update it and send it out again. And if anybody knows any other people, I had four that I checked out, um, um, and I know people who have used these folks, um, and I know Fred personally, but I've not talked to him or anybody about it. So I'll follow up. Yeah. And thanks for all that legwork. Okay. No sweat. Fun. That sounds like people, people that, that feels well talked through and our next step uh, is clear and everyone's comfortable with it. And yeah, and I just want to make sure CJ is good with it because this is her area, not mine. I just butted in. Yeah, well, I think you're you're just uh, we're grateful for you picking up the piece, the piece there. Okay, um, works for me. And then the other piece on old business is also sort of CJ centric. Um, this kind of uh, moving the account to free us up and give us more options. Um, you know, we don't want to have to do a vote on, on, on every move, um, she and Mark decide to make, but, um, just the, the idea that maybe Mark and she could do a, a little bit of an overview of like, here's where we've been, you know, like how uh, Mike Doyle used to regularly be like, you know, this whole laddered CD thing we're doing, it no longer works. And here's why, and here's what we're going to do is sort of a big picture philosophical, what the shuffle's about, um, so I, I don't know, Jim, could you potentially be the 
the the lead on maybe next board meeting that happened, or maybe they're not ready. I don't I don't know where it is. I I can touch base, or I can have it on my list to touch base with CJ and or Mark to find out if they're ready to present for the next board meeting in yeah in March April and not and not that they would have to like wait for that to make their moves, but if they could just be like, okay, here's our kind of um reasoning and uh just just be available to just kind of big picture it for us all and i think uh, cj was in spirit all all the way behind it i just don't i don't know what what has happened since we spoke so i appreciate it if you could pick up that piece okay um could i interrupt for just a minute yeah you got it but Chris, um, was um, Amy Schollenberger the person you were working with at Action Circle? Yes. Oh, perfect. She's fabulous. Thank you. Oh, yeah. She's definitely, I mean, she knows what she's doing. Yeah, I think. Oh, yeah, um, she does. Good person. She'll, that's great. I know. I mean, yeah, she, worked she, with her. She, she shepherded through our previous successes. Excellent. She's awesome. Um, is there um, other old business? I think. Sounds quiet. I would, in terms of new business, I would just like to highlight Chad's email and jam. And it's like, is there an, is there an action step we could, I don't, we've always talked about like, um, you know, uh, visiting with the board of Barry's public access. Uh, I mean, not always, that was probably a 2012, 2013 conversation, but maybe, um, I don't know if a board, a field trip or board to board thing at jam would be um, helpful for us to get our, get wrap our heads around next steps on strategic planning. Since it seems like there may be three or four steps ahead of us, but just, just feeling um, what Chad was saying in that email and wondering if that has a clear action step. Thank you, Chad. Uh, that's a good question. I think that we, we maybe next month could reach out to them. They, they were, I was talking with one or two members of their board and their executive director, and everyone seemed very excited about it, but they were in the middle of doing the White River Film Fest. So probably after they get a chance to like recover, and then we have cleared the Green Mountain Film Fest. Yeah, it, yeah. yeah good. <laughs> Once we get through the film festival season, you know, maybe we can look to do a, a field trip down there. Um, and uh, uh, in, in when it's a bit warmer, I think we mentioned earlier, that would be a good idea. We're not. Yeah, imminent. so kind of like a, a spring thing I'm hearing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it seems like fake spring right now, so I'm afraid to say <laughs> anything yeah. about the weather. Let's not <laughs> let's not book it for next week, thinking we're we're out of the woods, right? Um, you're also reminding me we're gonna try thinking of the spring. We're not gonna try. We are going to get ourselves back on um, annual meeting in May, which our bylaws call for in COVID. Mm -hmm. Threw our threw us off into the fall for a, a three year run, I think. But um, so just keeping an eye on May for um, our our annual meeting, getting getting back aligned with the how the bylaws spell out when we when we ought to do that. And then our you know, our twenty twenty three numbers will be much fresher when we report them out in May as opposed to September October. And, so, um, and the van, the van annual meeting will be May too. Um, the locations to be determined, but just to maybe we can work around that. Sure. Did we we hosted the last one? Uh, two years ago, we hosted. That was two years ago. Was in it's in Rutland, so it's which is crazy. It's but yeah, it's already been two years. Okay. I think it, it sounds like it's going to be in Middlebury. Okay. Um, do you expect with the Green Mountain Film Festival being in mid-March that 
um, we will get an off month circles. I mean, no is a fine answer. I'm just realistically, is that is that something board members can expect outreach or just like, hold on, we are barely keep, keeping our, between the legislative session and Greenmount Film Festival. Yeah, I mean, what's, what's I think- the, What's the, the pulse of the co-directors there? On, the, on the goal is to, to start looking at the process again so that like, I think it's literally like, we just need to refresh our memories on the process. And then uh, we'll, if anything, in, in March, we can definitely say, hey, like, these are the next steps. So, like, a, a check a check in with the circles is, is all we're thinking. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, gotcha. that does make me feel a little bit better to hear that it was a slow process for Jam, so. Yeah, su su super good reality check. Thank you, Jam. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, I'd like to know, on the van, are they losing money on their Comcast check the way we did? Uh, so van... Uh, other vans uh, don't get Comcast checks? Oh, other organizations that are members of yeah, that? Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a, there is a spreadsheet that we can look at, but they're all going down. A lot of them are plateaued. Um, because I, it seems to me that you could easily put together the way that this community has rebounded from the flood and the number of things that we've been participants in, community meetings and so forth, and that something like Comcast cutting a check down, that we need to find local, re, re, at least reimbursing so that we aren't losing money to run the, the media programs that we need to run to bring this community back. Yeah, and I think that's what Jin was saying. I think you're absolutely right. I, I My goal is to like put energy into that after this legislative session because it's like we're going to find out a lot about okay. the what happens with this new the community me media public benefit fund but it might be like a yes and it might be like we need that to make up for that revenue loss and we need to start asking people and say hey like we have you know legs to stand on we've done we've done all. i mean there's no everyone you talk to recognizes the work that that we've done that our impact right no, so no. Yeah. But I mean, there, there, there's flood relief for a lot of things. Right. Well, but there's no that's... general sense that media need flood, flood relief, or else there won't be people that know that the community is still a community and where they can go to both get help, yeah. but also speak their wishes for the future. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. And so it, it seems to me that, that to have media losing money during a, a post flood period. Where FEMA applications and individual businesses are applying for help just to come back open, that it makes no sense at all for us and I hope other band members to to not realize when there's that kind of a deficit going on locally, there needs to be more money for the media rather than less. That's sure. all. Yeah, right. sure. it is all the FEMA people come in and do like a little PSA, can it? Right. I think that we we kind of end up being this mm -hmm. like vessel for everybody which is great you know like i mean people use us and that's the thing it's like just like a library you know being able to show that they have more patrons than you know ever before and like i mean i think that that's the thing it's like with all of the, the programs and all the engagement and all of the production and all of everything it's like we've, we've only we only have done more and more coming out of covid yeah but you know you are the directors and the staff that needs the help. We and the board are ones that can piss and moan about, let's have more resources for you yeah. so that you aren't trying to cover massive amounts of things that need to be done and sure. we think and believe should be done with it, with diminished monies. Well, we might need your help if we have a I'll specific to say fundraising that, effort, you know, that well, might be, yeah. Pillar post, state house, or pulpit. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Well, Chris, do you anticipate um, a need for uh, testimony? upcoming um in advocacy of peg or are we beyond that point or would it, well, it would come up after crossover or what I, I, yeah I, I think when it would, come, it would come up when there was something in a committee to testify on but the, the this specific testimony that just happened was around the appropriations and the the budget so that was we had plenty of folks on there but yeah i mean that's i i would say always be prepared to at least you know have a two minute speech in your pocket, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> funny. Well, yeah, I think you can only do it. Yeah, you, you get two minutes on the clock. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, um, and then the other piece is, if there's a dedicated tax to a tax dedicated to peg, once that's passed, we don't have to keep going every year and saying, "Oh, legislature, please." Yes, that's the because deal, previously yeah. we've been asking directly for funds from them, and it's been a specific ask each time. But once a tax is dedicated to peg, it's not an ask again, right? It's just right. an ongoing right. fee. Yeah. yeah as and long then, as there's no sunset. Right. Okay, right. That's a sunset right. could be written into it. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's the thing I imagine Amy keeps an eye on, huh? Yeah, right. right. And I think that that's the, the the thing about it is like there's so much that's gone into this already. It would it, it seems challenging to pivot towards streaming. Um oh, we'll keep you posted, yeah. All right, good luck. Um, wait, I guess that's ah, sure it's always new business. Um, how are we doing with any other new business? Oh, I have one quick new business -y type um, that CJ recommended that I put it in front of the entire board. I had a personal gift card for Amazon that I applied to the Orca Amazon account and I wasn't able to get Amazon to correct it. So I was hoping to get Orca to buy me the equivalent amount in an Amazon gift card so that I could get my personal gift card back. But because it would show that Orca is buying me a gift card, it would look odd and it's for an amount of $300. So I just wanted to run it past the board to see if that would be okay. And that would be something that um, would show up in the books maybe not in the financial because it's a summary, but that it happened and if that would be okay to do. And that's, yeah, a, that's basically a payback, huh? Yeah, but it looked kind of, it would look a little bit odd on the book. So we just, I wanted to be transparent and let everyone know that this had happened. This is what we would like to do to fix it. And if that's okay. What is the the reason for buying a gift card to pay back? Why Why can't it just be um like paid as an as an expense of a reimbursement of a personal expense well because i felt like the gift card money wasn't i mean we you will use it for the purchase of equipment and stuff but it's not like cash so i felt like if you just bought or if i bought a gift card for amazon it would be in the same type of money so that it wasn't like i was trying to somehow cash out something so that's why i figured if Orca could just buy me a gift card in that same amount, then that would resolve it. Or you you concerned it might look like you were laundering gift cards through yeah. Orca <laughs> if it turned into cash on the other end. Yes. I, I don't know. I don't I don't know if any board members have that concern. If it's easier <laughs> just to reimburse you with cash, I think I I'm think okay was the, with the, the gift gist card. of I've... the gist of uh, Chad's question. Gift card, you've already thought it through. Gift card to gift card makes sense. Yeah, I feel like Got it's it. nice okay. and clean. We'll get too and... clever then. I'm I'm hearing no objections to that. Yeah, no, I'm I think it's easy to explain if it's if it's questioned. More so than giving her cash. I think gift card to gift card is a better idea. Okay, great. All right, that sounds by acclamation. Um Works for me. We've got a, a fourth Tuesday in April. Just looking at the next proper board meeting. Is the 23rd? That is a um, school break, and I'm pretty sure I'll be out of town. Would people be okay with the 16th, the third Tuesday? Okay, with me. I got a look. Thank you. There's also the this five Thursdays in April. We could also do the thirtieth, but if, I just thought to start with the sixteenth. Palin's got a thumbs up. I heard yay from Pat. Which day is this? What was it? The sixteenth of April. April the third instead of fourth Tuesday. Okay, 6.30 on the 16th? Yeah, yes, sir. if people could. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we... that seems good. All right. Okay. That's across the board. So that's at least a quorum. Hopefully we'll see more folks. Um, that may be our last item of business, choosing the next meeting. I have just one last question. You got it. Dave, the floor is yours. The, um, when Goddard goes online, what happens to the media at Goddard? In other words, I'm worried about media. I've heard that there's fiscal difficulties going on at uh, in in uh, Waterbury. Um, no, it's not. Oh, the DEV is about. getting. Just, yeah. I'm just worried about the way that we get news out on other media, that that there's differences and changes that are going on, and so I can't. I don't understand. Uh, do we have a media in uh, in in at Goddard? Or is it going to be gone once they go online because they don't have people there, like faculty? So they well, uh, uh, the radio station separated from Goddard. No, I understood yeah. that, but and, it just seemed like. So they're still they're still uh, okay. full power radio. Yeah, I just actually met with Lou recently. So okay, good. Yeah, I just want to know if they whatever yes. happens to Goddard College is separate. No, but, I understand. Yeah. It's just that some of us listen. Right. And yeah, I, they're, they're gonna remain on the radio. Yeah. I now. know Lou I know Lou has um sort of a game planned out and, and their 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 mind a little, little bit. Um if if the the physical studio space of Goddard um, were no longer available. I think the transmitters are locked in. They own them, but um, yeah. Um, they've okay. they, they've thought it. They've thought about that, and I don't think it's a dire. They got to figure something out tomorrow. But okay, I, I, I do know me. they have. Um, you know, it's it's not to compare. Well, sure, compare a little to to us in VCFA. We're not making a plan to move, but we are aware that there's movement afoot with our landlord. And we're just we keep an eye on. I think that's a fair parallel, actually. Okay. So Thanks. you you heard Goddard College is going all online. I'm have... sorry. That's oh. what's happening. Oh yeah, I didn't know. I, yeah, I'm just curious. Yeah. Yeah, for the time. Oh, I have to cut out. I have to cut out you guys. I'm very sorry. Yeah, I mean, I, we're we're. I think Dave Dave okay. got the last word. Okay, because I have to go give my dog her her insulin and give her her eye drug. Got yeah, stuff I think I think you might just miss miss the the moment of adjournment if you got to right, cut. Well, quick. Go ahead. Yeah, bye guys. Bye. Thank Take you. Care. Thanks uh, for all your Pat. input and help. Um, bye, Pat. <laughs> Dave, you, Dave, you feel good about that conversation? Was complete. That was fine. I just okay. wanted to raise an issue that I think is relevant to the overall communications in our area. Yeah. Yeah. Good note to end on, actually. Um. And I just adjourned at eight oh five. We're good. Do we have to move. Right. Do we have to move to adjourn? I mean, I in in we could. It's pro forma. If you want to, Chad, you want to make a motion? I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second. All right. it. And, and uh, Dave seconded. Calling the question. All those in favor of adjourning at eight oh. Is it still five? Yep, it's still eight oh five. Please indicate by saying aye. aye. All, All right. right. Uh, thank you, folks. That was productive and efficient. Always appreciated. And uh, have a fabulous uh, mid to late winter. <laughs>